scientist, but I've played one in meetings for several years now in the drug development industry. I have a problem, and I think you all do too, and it's these headlines that you get in your social media feed touting a cure for this, a breakthrough for that, a sudden disruptive change in the way we're going to approach some horrible debilitating disease, and you want it to be true. You can't not click on it, but 99,000 times out of 100,000, I will click on it, and you're reporting something down here at the bottom. It's got a, or it's early stage research, which, as Nicole actually previewed for us, has a one in 10,000, maybe one in 30,000 chance in actually making it to the top, which is a real drug that a doctor can use to treat a real patient. To put that in perspective, that's about your chance personally of winning an Academy Award. Okay, so why is there so much of this in the media? Well, as with so many things, part of the problem here is Congress. So Congress enacted something called the Bayh-Dole Act, which says that universities that get, federally fun get federal funds for research have to patent those things and then try and license them out for money. It's well-intentioned. The idea is to push research out of the academic ivory tower and make real cures out of it, but it has unintended consequences, which is that university PR offices are now advertising organizations for their tech transfer groups. And so you get this kind of endless sluice of information that's overhyping relatively early stage things. You're sitting in front of your Facebook feed crawling through shit like Andy Dufresne in the Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> so what do you do when you're facing this over your morning coffee, reading through your social media, what do you forward and what do you ignore? Well, first of all, ask yourself, what's the model system? Usually a lot of this stuff is in mice. A mouse is kind of like a model rocket. It's small, it's simple, an experiment can be run on it by one person, and so that's why you see a lot of it. The human body, however, is much more complex, like the space shuttle. Many more systems, lots more redundancy. When you perturb that system, the effects and the outcomes are a lot more challenging to predict. And that's why you have to run trials in humans to know if a drug or a device or treatment is actually really going to work. Another thing you should look for is, are they reporting out differentiated activity? I don't know how many of these things I've seen where they say, we cured cancer because we killed some cells that are from a cancer tumor, but we did that in a Petri dish. You know what else kills cancer cells in a Petri dish? Bleach. <laughs> okay, so there's a big difference between something that kills a cancer cell and something that kills cancer cells specifically without killing you. So let me tell you, so that's all the stuff that you should definitely ignore. Let me tell you, one weird trick for figuring out the things that you should really forward, okay? And it's something called the randomized controlled trial. Look for something that was a randomized controlled trial in human beings. And what that means is they took a homogenous group of individuals with a certain disease, they randomly divided them up into two or more groups. One of those groups gets a drug that's under investigation. The other group gets a drug that is the prior standard of care or gets a placebo. Let me show you what real progress looks like when you run one of these. Here's one of my favorites, a drug called abatinib for a type of leukemia. Note that it took five years to read out and it tested 1,100 patients. So this is a cast of hundreds to make this thing happen. It's randomized and note that there's zero click hype at all. It's the opposite. The way this gets reported, found to induce durable responses in a high proportion of patients. That's the driest language imaginable. What they're really reporting in the article is 87% of patients were actually cured or in remission at the end of that five-year trial. That's a cure. That's amazing. That didn't get reported in, you know, clickhole.com, right? So here's what happens in leukemia. In the 1980s, if you got diagnosed, you had three to five years to live. That's what the doctor would tell you. Now you have almost 30 years to live. Here's another example. HIV always gets clickbait. Here's real progress. You can barely pronounce any of the words in that particular article. This is a randomized controlled trial. And what it was testing results in, this is actually a uh, couple drug regimens further. In, in the future, but what, what we have as state-of-the-art today is at week 48, if you take a three-drug regimen in HIV, 90% of those patients are going to have undetectable viral load. And if you have undetectable viral load, you will not die of AIDS. And so what's happened in that field is obviously in the 1980s, we all know death sentence, death within a year from first diagnosis. By 2008, which is the most recent pooled study I could find, that 
expected life uh, is 39 years, and now today, you are most likely going to live to be a ripe old age if you begin taking HIV therapy. Not a cure, but spectacular progress. So I'd urge all of you to look for the boring arcana of genuine progress. Look for a randomized controlled trial. Look for these incredibly dry article headlines and understand that it's years and hundreds of people working to make that happen, but we're making progress. Thank you.